Before you get started with the lesson, let me give you a quick overview of how to use this series of videos. This is a series that covers Microsoft Office 2013 using documents, spreadsheets, and presentations. I'm a teacher. I work in Tolleson, Arizona at a high school called Westview High School. These assignments are selected to be exactly like what you would do in the real world. So using Office is what you'll use in a real office or in a real business. There is an assignment book that accompanies every video. Each page in the assignment book has a checklist of the things that you should accomplish in each lesson. Watch the video lesson to see how things are done. After you create your own document using the video as a model, you may have some modifications such as your own business names or your own paragraphs or your own data, but it'll look very similar. Now you can either watch the whole video through at one time or pause it as you go through it. Finally, print the document and your classroom teacher will grade it. So now, let's move on to your next assignment. Welcome to assignment number five. We're going to use a new program now. Instead of Microsoft Word, we're in Microsoft Publisher. It's similar to Word, but it allows you more precise control of where you put your text, the order in which you put the pictures, and uh, it's just what they call a page layout program. We're going to create a program that looks like this, or a, a document that looks like this, a Forbes magazine mock-up. It will have a picture, perhaps a view, and some headlines on it. So I'll get started here from scratch. I'll close this document and start a new one. The first thing we do is launch Publisher 2013. Publisher is like Word, however, it lets you do more options that you don't have in Word. Look at the rulers. That's the first thing you'll notice. We have a ruler across the top and a ruler along the side. That means that we have precise control of where we put things. The blue line shows the printing area that we're allowed to use inside this blue line. The way that uh, Publisher works is we create text box. I'm going to click a text box. You click here, drag, and inside there you can type anything you like. And after you type, you can move these boxes around. That's the difference that you have between Microsoft Word and Microsoft Publisher. Publisher assumes that you want to place your text in a certain area on the screen. And Microsoft Word just assumes you want to write a document, like an essay. Now, a good way to create a magazine page is to copy one that's already been done. So we're going to look on the Internet and see if we can find anything that would be a good model to look at. So I'm going to go to, oh, let's go to Google. I like Google's images, image search. And then we're going to choose some magazine. Let's call business magazine is our search term. And see what happens. Let's go look in the images area. And we have lots of magazines to pick from here. So I'm looking for something that's fairly simple to copy. I'm going to pick a picture from Forbes magazine here and I'm going to just copy this into Microsoft Publisher and use it as my model to pick from. So let's uh, right click on the picture and we're going to copy it. I'm going to choose copy and down here in the taskbar I'm going to select my publisher program. Right click anywhere on the screen and paste and I've got my magazine cover. Well, let's put him off to the side. I'm not going to actually print him. He's just there to look at. And for now the rest of the time I'm just going to use this as a model for what my magazine might look like. Let's go back to the text box that we created earlier and we'll use that as our headline. So, or the title. So delete the text that's inside there and type the word Forbes. You can't see a thing there so I'm going to double click it and then increase the font size. Let's pick 72. Let's go higher than 72. Let's keep going bigger and bigger. Center it inside of our box and let's change the font. What would look like Forbes's font? Something maybe that? Let's try a different... Um, we're looking for something that looks Forbesy. That's almost it. Although Forbes has a little bit of a curve to the letters. So pick something that looks elephant. Elephant is the font. It's almost Forbes. There's differences. The R has a curl in it, but it's close enough for our purposes. So 
I adjust the size of the box to fit the font. Now the next thing I want to do is add a photo. Let's say uh, this man here, he, he looks nice, but I'd like a photo of maybe some buddy, some picture, some, some friend, a picture of myself. Well, I'm going to just choose a picture from what they call the clipart gallery. So office.com clipart is where we're going. I'm going to search for somebody who's talking on the phone. So I'm just going to use the word talking on cell phone and see what comes up. And there are lots of pictures that I can use. Now the nice thing about the clipart gallery from Microsoft is that all the pictures can be used freely without any copyright restrictions. I'm going to choose this one for a couple of reasons. He is a businessman and the background is white so it's easy on the printer. It doesn't use very much toner. Now I would like this to be a vertical picture. Fill up most of the page. So I'm going to park this picture down here in the bottom left corner and start to stretch it until it comes all the way to the top of the screen. Hmm. Now I'd like to crop it so it's about the same width as the screen. Let's go down here. That's too far. I'm going to open it up to the edge of the paper about there. Click outside of it and now I have my page background. But it's not in the background at all. The nice thing about Publisher is that you can reorder the pictures. If I right click I'm going to have an option up here called send backward or bring forward. This is like a stack of cards on a tabletop. If I click send backwards you notice that the Forbes title jumps to the foreground. I'm going to adjust it as necessary. This picture needs to be a little bit higher. It's blocking the man's forehead about right there. Now let's add a couple of other items. You notice like they have a major headline for their title. Let's create a new text box and uh, let's put it over here and call our headline something like well, I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. I'm going to say Max Smith takes off with his new idea. So this is a, a feature article about my business. Uh, let's make that text a lot bigger. Let's go to the font size changers and something that's too big. Something about 48 looks about right. You can adjust the block to wherever you want it to be. And uh, let's choose one of these predefined text sizes. Instead of 48, I'm going to manually type in a number like 60 and press enter. Maybe, maybe bold. Okay, we're getting the idea. Now, what else does Forbes have? They have details. Down below here, there is a, a subtitle. And so I'd like to create another text box. So I'm going to choose insert and another text box down here and we're going to type over top of this man's suit. As I start to type you notice you can't see a thing. One option that you can do to be able to see better is to zoom. I'm going to choose the view button and under here I'm going to zoom to 150 percent. And so now you can see that we're very close to the writing. Also we need to change the color of the writing. Right now it's black. So let's use actually white over black sorry let's try that again I'm going to select all the text and choose a white color make it larger about that size right there and finish my headline Okay, so we're going to have some secret information about why this person succeeded where others have failed. You notice that in this text, some of the words don't show up very well. I can read the first part of the sentence quite well, but the word failed is completely impossible to read. What I need to do is add some three-dimensional look to this text. I need a black outline around it. So I'm going to change the format of the font. First of all, highlight all the text. 
And let's go to the font options up here. In this corner, there's a little arrow that brings up all kinds of fonts. And we could change the font, we could change the size. I'm going down to where it says more effects. And where it says shadow, I'm going to choose some of the presets. Now you can see that some of these presets have shadows behind them. So let's pick this one here that says let's see what this does. Now if you click outside of the text box, you can see we're getting better. I'm going to try a different size or a different font and experiment until I have a nice strong shadow. change the transparency to a little darker and click OK. OK. You hardly notice the text any different here in the black. But when you get to the tie area, there'll be a little bit of a shadow around, so now the E and the D actually stand out a bit. Experiment until you find what perhaps would look better for your text. There's many different options to pick from. Okay, I've bolded the text. I've made it a white shadow. I think I can read this better now. Let's put another line on. And this time we're going to add another subtitle about his business and let's let's put another subtitle in. We're going to say um, uh, what he does with his money. And then one more line. Uh oh, when I start to type I don't see any text. What happened? Well, the text box is too small for the text that I'm writing. I've been typing some characters, but nothing shows on the screen. So the red indicators on the edge of the text box indicate that there is more text to be seen. Still more text to be seen. I have to make the text box bigger. And now you can see that indeed I have typed a few more characters down below. I'm going to click at the end of the line and press delete and put one more where he plans to go in the future. I might decide that this line needs to be in complete white. That even stands out better. Maybe I'm going to do that for the entire first line. Text fill is white. The next line, let's add this one to be Does great work. Okay, those are different. I don't know if I like that style. You decide what you like. Now, I want to see the whole page again. So, where did I go for that? It was View. And I went to Zoom, and let's go to 100%. 100% is the actual size of the picture. So, if I scroll upwards, I can see the fonts, the pictures, as they would print. I'd like to see the whole page, so I'm going to zoom a little further, maybe to 66%. That's almost the whole page. Let's go to 50%. There, 50% allows me to see the entire document preview. You could add a few more items. Let's add another text frame at the top that says Special Issue. So I'm going to go back to Insert, do one more text box, and this time in this area I'm just going to type the word Special Issue and the font is impossible to read at that size so we will make it something a little bit bigger. Let's try yellow again and change the size. Too big. And maybe to pick a different font. Uh, you decide once more again. Let's try this. And once more, I have to resize. In Microsoft Publisher, you actually can allow text to overlap each other. So if I click on the text box, I can overlap a little bit of Forbes. OK, I have a magazine page, a magazine cover. I'm going to delete the original 
and now save this document and print. And now I'm famous.